Okay, good morning. It's not a.m. Monday, June 26, 2017. And I call the Clark County Commissioner's Court to order. Today we have Mike Cunning from Second Baptist Church who will give an invitation. Can you please stand and remain standing for the question? Let's pray together. Lord, then this is the day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Or we come to you today proclaiming you as our creator God. We acknowledge and receive your gift of salvation through your only son, Jesus Christ. And we seek your guidance with the aid of your spirit. Lord, you set all things in order, including this governing body. We accept the sacred admonition to help everyone here today to seek justice, love mercy with clarity and resolve, to practice kindness and show our love for others, to employ charity, discernment, maturity, and wisdom, to serve our fellow citizens with humility and impartiality, to support and encourage the best from ourselves and others. Our community has entrusted us to seek what's best for everyone and promote the common good for all according to your will. Bless the efforts of these men and women in this meeting to complete the tasks set before them. Forgive us when we fail to seek and follow your plans for ourselves and our fellow men. Make us more like you in all that we do. And in your name, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. The United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Quick note before we get started. Um, I know what's going on last week, and I'm very happy to relay this to you. The Melvin Drum Chief Deputy of the Year Award is the Texas Chief Deputy Association's highest honor. It was named for Melvin Drum, who was the Chief Deputy of Alton Tree County. He was killed in the line of duty while on a traffic stop involving a domestic disturbance. Chief Drum was not only an outstanding Chief Deputy, but also was extremely involved in his community especially with youth activities. Recipients of this award embody not only the qualities set forth by Chief Brown, but also individuals who have provided exemplary service to the Texas Chief Deputies Association. We are honored today to honor one of our very own, David Johnson, received that award last week, and we want to give a tiny thank you. Anyway, congratulations Thank to you. you. Thank you for job well done. Okay, number one on the agenda is approval of minutes. Recognize the minutes from the June 12, 2017 Water County Commissioners Court meeting. Is there any additions or questions on that? Uh, I have just a couple of things. I think they're just typo service.
dollar donation. Where did that come from? Okay, yeah, eleven hundred thousand was fairly significant, so I was just interested to know where that came from. I do too, I remember it. So it probably wasn't a monetary donation, it was probably oh it was a good one. It was probably oh it was a good one. What is a good one? Okay. 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 Question of the uh, constable expenses for the reserve deputy. What kind of guarantees do you have that we're going to keep those people after we spend all this money on education equipment? Do we have, do we have any way of. There is no guarantee. <laughs> I believe they've gone through a, a pretty thorough screening process here to choose the reserves. So I feel like the constables are comfortable with who they choose. Well, I'm just like, I don't know if we're sorry going to spend all that money and then all of a sudden they have to go to another agency or something. This is a good point. Uh, this is a good thing. The point, even though they have gone through an extensive screening process, uh, it seems like we would have some type of uh, validation or. Well, you know, if they, if they take it off on us, so how about repaying it? You know, something like that. So this is an awful lot of money to pay for the good debt. I want to throw that out there and see what the other members of the court consider and think about it. Well, I think it's fair, for my opinion, it's fairly new, right? And so they're trying to get the reserve program um, under their belt and, and really start to evolve in the county. A thousand dollars for education would seem to me, you know, fairly minimal. Um, I would agree. I think if it was a ten thousand dollar expenditure, we were flying them you know, out of state or something along those lines. I think it's something we need to watch. I actually wouldn't be surprised if in their budget this time around, they are asking for something like this to have a line on it. I don't want to speak for them, but I would be surprised. <laughs> and they are. And they, okay. So uh, I, don't, I don't know it's enough to because they, they get a uniform to wear too. A uniform. Yeah. Or Eagles concert. Sure didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's a good point, Commissioner, and I think it's something we need to watch. It yeah. is so very new. Um, but I, what I've heard, at least about the screening, is that they are individuals that want to work here. They're committed, and we're not paying them salary. Yeah, we want to issue the back. I think that's a good point. Yeah. Okay. These are the kinds of things I was worried about. Just kidding. Yeah. Uh, I do have just a couple more things, Judge. Item three, Carrie, the JP number two, or I'm sorry, number four, salary and benefits contingency. This chief clerk is going on the FBI, and we need to get someone else to step in while she's out. Okay. And then um, item five, just 263000 coming from contingency. This was something that we had actually put in for budget this year. The plan was kind of to, we have about 45 switches across the county to connect everybody into the network and into, into internet. So. All of your computers and phones and several printers and things like that. Um, the switches that we're currently using are coming kind of end of life and into support, and so we need to get those moved out and get new ones in place. Um, as I said, the original plan was to do it in thirds, so by 15 each year and kind of go along with that. Um, then we saw that we could actually get a huge discount if we bought all 45 now especially with all of the equipment that we're buying for the LEC. Um, it's dropping the price of each switch by about $1,500 a piece or more, depending on all the equipment that we buy for the LEC. So if we, also if we buy it before the end of uh, June, July, is when Cisco's end of fiscal year comes, and so they're going to be giving more discounts on all that. So. So Carrie, with the amount at 263000 I think we only have a half a million with the contingency. How does that, where does that put us fiscally? We, we have several more months in the budget cycle. We do, that leaves us with 288000 in the contingency. So it is 
it's a little bit slim, but I think it might be a good way. Okay. There are a few other places that you can to get into a new park. And this wouldn't qualify to go into the law enforcement project. This isn't as a result of that. This is just countywide. No, these are just yeah, these are just switches that we use in the downtown buildings and um, all of the equipment that will go into the LAC will come out of that portion of the budget. I'm just surprised with it being end of life that it wasn't it didn't get more attention in the budget cycle. Um, I guess I'm surprised to see that dollar amount this far into the budget. Let's not recognize that. We were betting that. Well, but the original intention was to do that within the next three years. Right, right. Just so to replace it in thirds. Right. The the cost is fifteen each. Each budget cycle, if we got a savings right. through all of the cost to do 15 with uh, support was going to be around $104,000. So we're going to save some money by doing them all at once with the LAC equipment. And there's no IT line items um, that could offset this at all. 100% of it has to come from a contingency. We may be able to pull some of it from there if we can get the money from the back of the world. But I'm pretty sure it's going to be too much. Right, but you're not going to find that number. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Do you have a motion? Will we approve the budget amendments? I have a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Bowser, to consider an act of approval of the payment of vouchers process by the town officer's office for the period of June 7, 2017 through June 21, 2017. Check numbers 175297 through 175512 and wire transfers 916 through 918 in the amount of $4,012,148.48. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Thank you. And the wire or indicated uh, for four million thousand uh, forty eight and forty two forty eight. Second for discussion. Just have one quick question, Judge. Page six of twenty seven, uh, check number one seven five three five eight, the amount of seven thousand repairing the twenty sixteen Chevy Tahoe. I just Clarification was that an accident? Project to hear report on the amended construction project from the Office of the Court of Appeals and take the action necessary. Judge, would you like to get up and talk about this or Mike? You want to do First of all, I certainly appreciate you taking me out of order. Uh, sure. Uh, the Court of Appeals is just seeking the permission of the Commissioner's Court to do some renovations in our uh, offices. Originally, you recall, we had planned more extensive changes just beyond our budget control. We're hoping now to um, uh, refresh the uh, common areas by putting down new flooring and that can necessitate that we actually make some alterations to the building itself in that we had some credenzas that were originally uh, part of our office staff because we re reduced our staff, we were gonna remove those credenzas. And that was gonna be the substantial change to the, to the building. And with those credentials removed, then the plan was to do read for it. All of it would come out of the budget of the seventh court of appeals. Mike can certainly help me out here. I think the 
the process was we were asking the, the permission from the Commissioner's Board to make those alterations to the building, but also the contracting. I think you paid for it and you paid it back. Right. Right. But I can tell you the legislature had a pretty good budget, so we will. Yeah, so you're good for it? But we're good, we're good for it. Right. And we need to have it finished by the end. That the, originally we wanted to do the big project by the end of the summer. Uh, our budget year ends uh, August 31, so uh, we, you know, we're hoping to finish it on August 31. And, and we're going to take it in two stages. First was to remove the cadenzas and you know, have to necess necessitate repairing the walls. Um, and then after that, we're going to come in. And so uh, the total <laughs> project was going to be in those two stages with the uh, electrical work and the full and the credential repair running less than ten thousand, about seventy five hundred dollars, and then the flooring we were looking we received an estimate between thirty five thousand and forty thousand. Again, all uh, expenses that the seven uh, will reimburse the county for until we get the approved. Did you say thirty five thousand for the Yeah, uh, originally we had had a smaller area of it in the, in the kitchen area. Mm -hmm. And the uniformity we discussed going, if you're familiar with the courtroom, entirely around the courtroom and the hallway. So the hallways would all be in the laminate wood, wood floor, um, just for uniformity. So what is that total of? Uh, total of about, um, uh, what is that? Maximum of, of about 60,000. And we're looking at 40,000 on the flooring and about 7,500 on the other. Uh, uh, if there's any contingencies or things that, that change, I, I don't think there would be material alterations to the building itself. Let me, let me throw something out there. Nikki, have you got any, have you seen the proposals? Okay. No, I haven't. The question would be the proposal that uh, David Moore, I believe, gave here for the electrical uh, was more electric. Uh, Wonder if that's at their rate or our rate. That's something we need to look at because they come through us, it's actually a cheaper rate. So that's something we need to look at. So you've got the electrical, uh, more electric would be doing it. I'll have to bring in probably town and they'll be once we get the credentials out and see what we're going to do with the wall. There's, that may be another cost that's not covered here right now. And it'd be a very minor cost. Our crews will go through and tear out the credentials and get everything ready. I want to come in and roll for Can the credits be moved, uh, moved to some other office? These, are, these are built in when the okay. building was built in. The <coughs> we used to set out in front of the judge's office years ago. They're, I guess, not needed. Yeah. We've reduced our staff, and, and so this storage area is no longer necessary. And it, it's in the, the public area. <coughs> And I, I think what you're talking about, they'd be pretty worried that you wouldn't be able to. We wouldn't be able to sell it. Okay. Okay. And now I'm assuming the proposal will go to make you follow our purchasing process and the protocol with that dollar amount. I just want to make sure. What really needs to happen is me and Vicky need to work yes. with these contractors okay. and they went for it to make sure we got the best price. Okay. Do you have any problem with the changes being made to the bill? Okay. okay. Do you need a motion? What are we approving? Yeah. Well, we're all good. We're approving the the uh, Four change. the changes that they're going to make because it's our building, so that's why we have to we have to allow them to do this. So we're, yeah. that, that, that's what I did. We're just asking permission, permission to yeah. alter the building and to pay for the change. We paid, they pay us back. I make a motion to approve the amended construction project in the office of the Court of Appeals and to follow the appropriate purchasing protocol. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, adjourn. Five, zero, thank you. 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 Panhandle Regional Planning Services for Strategic Planning Services. We have Kyle Hinton here from the PRPC. Good morning, Kyle. Good morning, thanks for having me. Kyle hasn't said it, uh, but he's going to be the head of the CEO. Congratulations. Congratulations. Well, thank you. I'm very humbled and uh, very appreciative. I look forward to the opportunity to work with you guys in that capacity. Thank you, sir. 
Uh, as, as many of you know, a couple months ago, you uh, entered into a local agreement with the Assistant Strategic Planning, Commissioner Vaughn and uh, Commissioner Marquis got that moving, and we've had a really good time moving on that so far. As we got to looking at the issues facing the county, you guys do a lot of stuff in a lot of areas. <laughs> so uh, we spent about the first month developing background information as to where you're at on several different areas. Broadly, those areas that we had de de determined would be the overarching areas we look at are facilities, law enforcement, fire protection, road and transportation, legal and judicial, general staffing, communications, and fiscal and budgeting. Under each of those areas, we've actually identified about 10 different subtopics that we'll want to look at. What we did is uh, establish a small working group. I don't know how Judge Tanner selected these people, whether it was short straw or long straw, but we ended up with uh, Commissioner Murguia, Commissioner Vaughn, Carrie Hood, Scott Brumley, Mike Head, Julie Smith, and Randall Sims. So, like I say, I, I think they all were lined up waiting to be a part of this, and I really appreciate their uh, willingness. I can honestly to, tell you that some were not. In my mind, I'm going to think they're all okay. okay. As long as you think they are. Thank fine. you, Judge. And I want to have even one of those picks I'm concerned about. Uh -huh. I'm not going to mention it. Fair enough. That's what you're saying. I believe you went out for us, but they won't feel left out. We will be calling on other department heads at a time when yeah. we used to the front of the top of the discussion. So all of you look forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you see that 372 number come up, just yeah. let them know it's us. Um, but what we're doing is we're having a series of small committee groups where we're looking at these topics and essentially defining what we mean whenever we say facilities. Um, depending on whether you're in purchasing or if you're live or if you're Commissioner Gia, you you view facilities differently. So we're trying to define what we mean when we say facilities. Once we have those definitions put together, we'll come together as a larger body and have the full strategic planning session. But it didn't seem to be wise to pull everybody together and go into strategic planning until we had identified what we meant when we said certain terms, as well as what are the challenges in these different areas. So we had our first meeting last month. We got through, uh, what was it, about 12 items, I think? We got through about 12 of roughly 50 different items. Um, defining those, establishing what the challenges are we're facing in those areas are. Um, we actually have a poll out right now. It looks like we're going to get together again in a couple of weeks um, with this small planning group and go through and try to knock off another 10 or 15 of these items by defining them and establishing the challenges. Once we have that document put together with all of the issues we're looking at defined and, uh, and uh, the challenges identified, that will go out to all the strategic planning members everybody will have the opportunity to prepare for about a month and then come back together and we'll have probably two, maybe three strategic planning sessions where we prioritize these items and we start knocking off and developing strategies for those top ranked items. Um, the meeting we had the, the other day was very, very productive. I felt very good about the direction it was going. Um, and it, it became very clear very quickly. Whenever you say certain terms, it depends on which side of the beach ball you're looking at, which color is facing it. So, um, we're getting that lined out, and I think it, we're going to all end up on the same page, and this can be a good, positive, uh, year long process. Y'all have any questions? I don't have any questions. Other than operationally, when we meet, we will commit to the court to kind of just putting this quick agenda item on so that everybody can stay um, afloat with the information. So, other than that, yes, ma'am. And uh, Dustin Meyer with the PRPC is here with me also. He's been involved in this uh, from day one, and as I transitioned into some other responsibilities, Dustin's going to be taking over my current responsibilities as uh, local government services director of PRPC, and uh, this will end up being his primary project. It's one that I'm going to keep a hand on because I think it's a really interesting project. So, Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, I'm looking forward to interim report. Do you recognize the insurance report? Good morning, Kate. Good morning. There's nothing unusual on the insurance report this morning. So we be nice. And we find time clock to hear a report on time clock plus and make any action necessary. Well, good morning. Um, we are currently at um, stage eight, which is the final stage. We're working on the sheriff's office uh, for implementation now. Um, all the SO job codes have been entered into Time Clock Plus, and we're currently working on the accrual rules, um, which is part of that back end process uh, for Time Clock 
plus um, in order to make sure that everything um, accrues and applies correctly um, and the system does those uh, processes automatically. We're also working on um, master reports. That's going to be a special concern and Veronica in my office has been working on that um, as we go along. We've also been cleaning up and purging the employees in the sheriff's office because uh, we of course uploaded back at the beginning of this process. So we're purging the employees that are no longer there and um, loading the employees that have changed. Um, we have, Veronica has a meeting um, with Tilly at the SO on July the 12th to have a walkthrough on those job codes and um, to make sure that everything is correct and we're not missing anything on the job codes. Um, they will at that time take a good look at the system um, overall and, and address any concerns that um, Tilly has uh, that we may not have seen at this point. Then um, there is another meeting scheduled. We anticipate the uh, first week of August um, to test those issues that are, arise during this first meeting um, to make sure that, that everything is flowing smoothly. Um, at the end of that August meeting, um, there, our hope is that we can move forward then um, in scheduling the go-live dates and to work through those processes. Um, the goal is to have um, the Sheriff's Office on before the end of the fiscal year or by the, the end of the fiscal year. Um, also, just so that you're aware, um, we are currently operating on version six of Time Clock Plus, and there will be a budget item on my budget to upgrade to version seven because version six is no longer being supported. That support has gone away. We've extended through the end of the fiscal year, but we will need to upgrade uh, to version seven uh, with our upcoming uh, new budget year in order to maintain support. Any questions? <clears throat> After the potential September delay of the SO, what is left after that? Well, um, those are all of the departments that have agreed to come on. The only thing that will be left after that are the courts and um, the DA will not be on at that point. Um, for a total of 51 employees is the uh, approximately 51 employees are not on. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Kate. You're welcome. Um, number six, the ARCH program to consider an active one participation in the ARCH program offers uh, TAC HTTP for HCA tracking and reporting in the authorized county justice side to interlocal agreement and contact with the nations. Um, TAC has uh, offered us to um, do the ARPS um, program to create the 1095C forms and uh, do all of that record keeping and follow with the IRS um, just as they did last year at no charge countywide. Um, however, because CSCD is not uh, a part of our administrative services only group, there will be the same $4.25 per form fee charged for CSCD after the process is finished and they count the number of total 1095s that they um, prepare for CSCD. I've talked with Terry Easterling and he is in full agreement um, to um, approach the 1095s the same way this year and to reimburse the county the cost of those forms. Last year, the cost for CSCD was $295.65, and uh, CSCD reimbursed that cost um, through the insurance fund report. Hey, how was it since yet, uh, last year was the first year that, was, that we entered into this particular agreement? Yes, for CSCD, and everything um, went smoothly. Um, they 
already have all of the information at TAC. We already have the processes. We have the files. And um, they asked at the end of the year last year that um, we, everyone who was currently participating to continue to upload the information on a, a, every payroll basis. And so they already have what's in the, uh, has been processed through payroll thus far. Um, if we choose not to participate, that information will just be dumped, but we are up to speed and ready to just process through the rest of the year. Same as what for the 10 9 months. I move that we have continued participation in the ARTS program. Office of fact, you so, Motion and a second. All in favor, raise your hand. Uh, zero. Thank you. <laughs> Number seven treasures report. <clears throat> okay, briefly. Um, this morning at Emerald National Bank, our general fund is eighteen million. $205,567.76, and we're currently earning 1.14 uh, as our interest, and that's last week's rate. I haven't received this morning. We get it every Monday, and I'm not sure what these people do, but that should be in the general area. Texas class is earning 1.15. And we have eight million six hundred and twenty-one thousand four hundred and seventy-two dollars and two cents. In text pool, it's earning seventy-six basis points, and we have four hundred and one thousand one hundred and fifty-six dollars and thirty-eight cents. And in text pool prime, it's earning one point oh six, and we have five million sixty thousand seven hundred and seventeen dollars and fifty-one cents. So our total cash general is $32,288,913.67. We have, um, I mean, rates have been steadily going up. We're kind of in a lull right now. I mean, they've dropped maybe a basis point or two, but every day it changes. So it's be tired tomorrow, but we still have good rates. Do you have a quick question? Um, when we did the policy, it was the annual policy a couple of quarters ago, mm -hmm. there was a new addition to diversify, if I remember correctly. There were no additions. We didn't change the policy at this time. Um, speaking of that, though, this last conference, they did pass a couple of bills. So um, I do need to change some wording in the policy, and we'll bring it before you guys again. Okay, I thought there was an additional either agent or. Oh, well, I mean, it was a broker. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And well, that, that was the only change okay. was to add another broker to our broker's list. Oh, we haven't tapped into that broker at all. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. okay. Just interested. In and I'll bring it before you guys before we do that. Thank you. Thank you. Number nine, donation and acceptance to consider and approve for college property in the school district. One man of Safari Land Second Chance Body Armor for use in Armor 2. I don't have any backup in my packet in there. Do you know anything about that? Does anybody you know anything about that? I just got a call. Did you just get a call? Okay. Steve Ryan went last time to put this all the way up. There's rumors for his. There's no documentation on that or anything? Okay. Does he need body armor in his court? I'm just curious. I mean, I don't care if he has it. I'm just, free. it's a donation, it's free, but does he really use it? I didn't look at it. Okay, okay. Did you get any notification? I got, I got a call from him saying that he was looking at getting him. That was the only notification I got. Body armor at Elliot and Adams Parking for the school district for county parking lot number two. Motion and a second. All in favor? Thank 
you very much. I have 10 share sale to consider next upon changing the location of the share sale from the auditorium in San Diego to the courthouse there for the July 4th sale only if you take any action necessary. Someone came to me asking what we were going to do. They, they, it's a holiday, the building's closed, can they put on the courthouse on, on the courthouse steps? And we used to do it on the courthouse steps for a gazillion years back when I was a kid. And, uh, and so I said, yeah, so we, we had to put it on here to get that approved from the court. So it's not going to be that big of a deal. We're just going to do some people sitting on the courthouse steps in July. So that's a problem. Right? It's just this one time that we're going to move back to the same thing. It's just a, a weird circumstance where the first Tuesday of the month is in the holiday. So, was Edward doing something? I was, yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I make a motion to approve changing the location of the sheriff's cell from the auditorium to the, from the auditorium of the Santa Fe building to the courthouse steps on the July 4th, 2017 cell. Please. I have a motion. I'll second. All favor is right now. Since uh, it started with Rebecca King's uh, uh, it's VA and Ralph Fletcher was doing it. It's an uh, Internet Crimes Against Children grant. It's a Department of Justice grant. And it, we don't have the grant. The city of Dallas has the grant. The city uh, Dallas Police Department is the hub. What ICAT does, they've got, an, they've got a national organization set up. But then throughout the United States, they have what they call a hub. We're one of the sprockets off of the Dallas hub. Does that make sense? Yep. It's been that way for, We've been doing this for, a, long time. for a long time, very long time. And we continue to do it. And uh, uh, so a lot of crimes get reported to them about the internet crimes against children. And then they'll let the local agency know, then local or Hub know, hub then we'll let the local agency know that something's happened. And we've had that happen. Well, I can't tell you how many times. Not a lot, but enough that it's worth being in it. And so they they kicked a little little funds to us every once in a while to pay for the internet line and that kind of stuff that's dedicated to that deal. It's totally separate and independent from anything else. How long has this agreement been in place? <clears throat> I've been in office for 13 years and Rebecca was doing it. So, so this is a renewal? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Yeah. We don't have any backup, so that's where my question is. Yeah, yeah, I, I just got it. Yeah. Well, first thing, I well, know. <laughs> there's maybe five original <laughs> copies. <laughs> so just go to the last page of each one of them and sign it. Sign it. So I don't have to be, go through all okay. the But okay. anyway, it's probably 16, 17 years. How often do we renew it? I don't, I don't know. Well, it's a good thing. Yeah, we've, here's what's happened. They kind of dropped the ball on sending out the interlocal agreements and they just kept kind of riding from the previous one. And I, I raised the issue with Veronica, my office administrator. I said, you know, I haven't had anything from Dallas about the ICAT thing in a while. So she contacted me and went, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so that's why we got it. It's actually, this one's for 2016 and 17 uh, time period. So we should be getting another one. <laughs> so here, here before long, all pros and no copies. Right. Yeah, this agreement ends June 30th of 17. That's, a, so that's what I'm saying. Way. We should be getting another one here. Right. 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 Right.
Because the level of that, the top right just says she, the lady just went, whoops. <laughs> okay, so what's a shame is that we have to have this, that there are internet crimes against children, that's the bad thing. Correct. Yeah, okay. All right, I need a motion. Motion to approve the consent agenda. We approve the interlocal agreement between the city of Dallas and the board of seven attorney's office. Second. I have a motion and a second on the favor of each other. Uh, so when will this come back for next year? Probably a lot quicker than this one did. Okay. <laughs> okay. a copy of the agreement to, I'd like to review it, I don't, I've never seen it. So okay. I don't need this one, it's fine, we took a motion, but when it comes I'll, around, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get Veronica's okay. scan, once okay. I get that back, I'll get okay. Veronica's scan and send it to Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm only comfortable since we've done it for so long, because typically I would stay in the company. Now, there, it, it basically will, pay for like one of the investigators is doing overtime on business. Well, I've got a specific investigator signed to do that. So if he winds up going with the PD or sheriff's office or someone like that, help him. But he'd be the person that gets the call about five folks. So he'll pay for that and pay for the internet line. And that's about it. I mean that's really all there is to it. Okay. Thank you, sir. So, thank you. Mm -hmm. Number twelve elections to consider and accept the donation of a desk from Catholic Charities in Texas Panhandle. Well then, you actually have a picture of the donation. So it did. And it came up really nice. Yeah. So I'm just asking you to be able to keep it. Where did you what if we say no? <laughs> no, we're good. No. Then we get to move it. Is already in your office? Mm -hmm. Well, it's in, one, in the outside offices. It's, it's going to be for Bobby and Don. Do you want to add to that? No, it's beautiful. Okay. Any motion? Any motion? Do you want to accept the donation? Second. Second. Motion and second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Five and zero. Thank you very much. Number 13, courthouse. To consider and act upon a course of action for completion of unfinished court versus ill works. This is an item that we've been presenting to y'all since 2012. Uh, on the county courthouse, the restoration work, we had a, one of the warranty claims was on the millwork. A company uh, referenced as Rester Haas, owned by Richard Openhaus. Uh, that's his company. We went through the project, we filed the warranty claims, and within God, probably last year or so, we finally have re they, we've been notified they would come out and do the work. We had all the work established in spring to start and finish by May. It never happened. They come, they go, they leave stuff. Uh, they've actually got part of uh, Judge uh, Jones's uh, uh, calendar up there and everything. So right now, uh, Tad's been working with them. We've actually received a schedule back from them. They're going to come through and once again, they'll make an offer that they will come in and do the work. They're leaving not at hours. The schedule that was uh, presented to us, uh, right now, Judge Fowler's area up top, I've totally rejected all the work they've done. It was poor quality work. Uh, they've been notified, come back and correct it. Uh, but, uh, and we have not seen them. So even if that was done, then the third floor courtroom, uh, they're looking to come back July 5th, take two to two and a half weeks to do it. If they complete that, and that's if the court there would allow them to come in and work, it's hard for them just to shut down the court that long because we'd already had it scheduled. The commissioners, this uh, y'all's bench right there is the only one that we lack right here. They're looking at four weeks starting it at the end of July. The uh, second floor being the largest, they're looking to possibly start in August or September. Uh, you know, taking six weeks to do. So, uh, one of the previous court meetings, uh, I had asked her what she wanted to do. I went to a local contractor here. The original projected cost that we put with this warranty claim was slightly over $40,000. The cost that has come in right now from a local contractor was around 46000 to come in and just do the work, get it over with, and then let y'all or the county attorney's office worry about what to do with 
restaurants. What's your comfort zone, Mike, in uh, continuing to use this? Uh, this letter was about uh, four years too late or three or whatever. This, this is a really nice letter, but uh, it takes a long time. To really late. I, I get a little tired of this kind of stuff, but we apologize. Well, I, I'm, has anybody from the company here to me? Were they invited? They were invited to be here. Would you come? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so moving forward, uh, we might have to look at uh, going ahead and buying the building. And, uh, I just have a question on, on the local estimate. Yes. It said duration for number one, number two, number three, number four. Uh, 20 days, 20 days, 10 days, 10 days. Is that for each of those projects? Days on the commissioner's call to work. Yes, and what we would do in the commissioner's court, we we'd agree to do this with restaurant houses. Originally, they would come in and take that. <clears throat> We've uh, required them now to provide a temporary one for y'all just to sit at because at least be one of your court meetings to come in and do that work. We originally had this plan when y'all held your court over in the Santa Fe building, and it was all supposed to be completed. Government day? Yes. Yeah. So are you, I want to make sure I'm following what you're presenting, Mike. You're presenting the timeline that the company is saying that they can commit to, or Palmer Painting and us paying the 46000 to do it? Both. Uh, Both. Yes, the uh, cost there, the 46560 that's with Palmer Painting coming in with their woodwork and their millwork guys. And then now you've got Rester Haas, I, I'll send Porter County a letter. We can do it. The ones they just sent us a check. Realistically, uh, the point is the subsequent bill that expenses and response to the particular project, and then possibly uh, we have to assume that he is uh, just how we will do it. But I would imagine our, our legal um, footing changes <coughs> significantly if they're offering a timeline. Uh, and we're rejecting that timeline in this in, in this year to focus on this budget. Yeah, I would not I would not disagree with that at all. Yeah, I'm not. I'm just trying to think about it a little bit from both angles. I would imagine if they're presenting to us, and I'll leave that to you, Tad, as well to discern if they're presenting an option um, that is a foreseeable future um, that may shift our footing if we decide to do it on our own and then file suit. This letter doesn't really do anything to us, but I mean, what it really does is confess that they aren't done what they were supposed to do. Um, so the options are to proceed with the work through Palmer Payne and then file suit on this. And that may or may not result in any recovery, but uh, I really thought someone from this outfit would be here this morning, but they're not. This is the first time I've seen anything documented in a timeline, and um, maybe I'm just optimistic and the glass is, is half full, but th they're not kicking the can down the road to say December. I mean, this looks to me around September-ish, um, but I don't want to speak for them at all. Right, so I feel a, everybody's you know, paying on this board, that, too. Though, you're talking about the work that they did was not completed properly either. Yeah. In my how many times have we used Palmer Paint over the years? Quite a few. Uh, okay, so they actually now. did the they're flood they're project they're and everything. They're and they're they're they they're actually have a contract with Palmer <coughs> County to do this type of work. Where would this money come from, the 46 five for Palmer Paint? <laughs> if you say contingency, <laughs> let, let me take out a building repair account and uh, if I run short, then I'll come back to y'all. This was not I'm sorry. No. We're gonna do it. I don't know if we'll do the work file on two days. Is that a motion? I'm on my top of that. Could you say where the money's gonna come from though? The money will come from the line built and repair and repair. Can you go ahead and make that motion, Mike? Like, I do. No, I didn't hear you. 
contract where we started getting charged by TPC, basically the, the psychiatrist would see a TPC uh, client and that psychiatrist would bill TPC, TPC would bill us, and we would pay it out of that money that was owed to go to inmates that were not TPC clients. So we've been doing that for about two or three years and again it just comes our attention that really this money needs to go to inmates that are not being helped in you know, another way. I called uh, Brandon County TPC is not charging them for, for the psychiatrist you know, evaluation so uh, we just didn't think that our guys should be charged you know additionally for what that psychiatric you know psychiatric services so we felt like we would in this contract, it's not saying we're not still working with the TBC okay. and okay. Okay. So it's just removing this contract <coughs> that we're gonna pay for which is their clients to see psychiatric you know, a psychiatrist. So it sounds uh, like a little bit of a county kind of an error view is what I'm meant to be seeing. Well, are they going to refund at all? Does anyone have that dialogue with TPC? They're probably not going to refund what it's already been spent. Okay, and we've confirmed that with their leadership? No, we wanted to get rid of this, this contract here. We wanted okay. to, to get this and all the basically get out of how it works here. And then we would like to come and talk with, with TPC. Well, we signed the contract, so we got ourselves in. Well, but I think, um, yeah. I think it specifies non-TPC inmates. Mm -hmm. Another cursory it doesn't actually say that. It that was not. clearly the intent. Okay. But no, it doesn't actually say that. And so it's kind of this Okay. I'm talking with Coach Sir on Thursday, and uh, he is out of town. And he wants to meet with us quickly to get this resolved. And I have pretty good. Feel pretty good about getting it resolved. I think we can do this. And that does not. I'm not saying we're going to go back with the contract with the. But I think he's got a really good explanation. I'll let we can get together. And, okay. and, and TPC also, Randall County has three employees, mm -hmm. uh, our TPC employees. Uh, we used to have a TPC employee that was at our facility. And she's sitting over there now. She works for us. <laughs> Ray, who's doing the you know, programs, the, the anger management, and some of that stuff that we you know, use commissaries to pay for. And, uh, they've never replaced her since January. So Randall has three positions and we have zero. Right. <laughs> and we have um, the largest share of mental health patients. Yes, we do. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So now that there's a, there's a, I mean, it's kind of complex because they're saying that they have a uh, grant that paid for some of that. And I'm not sure, you 
there, there is, and there's an explanation for it. I just don't want to just make it public. Okay. Um, and I'll, I'll is something we need to pass. Not under that. Just go ahead. Just go ahead and vote. I think we can resolve it. Okay. We just want to get, like I said, send the notice to the one of the six. Get out the contract. Mm -hmm. And in that 60 days, we may can get this fixed, but if not, we'll go ahead and the 60 days, we can go and sign it on that today or vote on that today. Ted, do you think there's any issue with this? Uh, us, uh, I agree with that course of action. Uh, with follow-up discussions, if we decide we want to get another contract, we need more clarity. Sure. I have worked with folks for over 25 years. He was a very, very good man, and I, I just, I had to just, Cut him off and say we're done with you without an explanation from him or a chance for him to explain it. So we're going to get together. It's the sheriff out of town this week. You want to talk with us as soon as we could. So we'll get that set up. Okay? Is that good? Yes. I'm going to move that we uh, approve the proposal to deliver a 60 day notice of termination of Texas. Regarding this contract for provision of mental health service, by the end of the day, this is the Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your hand. Um, and Judge, when you visit, I actually would expect them to read. I'm just thinking about the way their money is allocated at the state level and grant, and I feel like our payment might be a, a duplication. Because um, they often count, they count the number of inmates, the, their statistics that go with that. So when you count, um, and it's not coming from your fund, I feel like that's a duplication. I've worked in a lot of nonprofit boards, so I would expect something like that personally. All right, number 15, formal bid number 1146-17. Consider an act upon awarding formal bid 1146-17 detention center laundry supplies to make the local as the world. Responsive. Um, I just want to make a recommendation to award to Bayfield. This is one that um, Matt Johnson's here. He's the buyer on it that we have to do it. Every, Matt, it's a three year contract, right? It's yes. A three year contract that we have to do this. Yes. So Bayfield, our current guest supplier. And no issues, customer service related. No, no, I don't. Form bid number 1146-17 with detention center laundry supplies. May be a paper company and the one was responsible for it. Second. I have a motion and a second. I'll take a break. Thank you. Thank you. Number 16, emergency equipment replacement to consider an act of replacing life pack 15 cubic letter for the detention center in the amount of $22,289.38 from Sterlington Medical. Funding to be determined. That's kind of something you need, huh? Um, come on back. <laughs> yes, I'll drop back. <laughs> Medical supervisor to explain kind of what the function functionality is of that machine. Uh, I guess it's been probably five years ago is when we purchased a refurbished one. And uh, it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> so, well, it, we, we just purchased it five years. Uh, I don't think it's about five years, maybe it's six or so. But the refurbished one, so it worked for, for that long. And uh, it's pretty much out of date too. Uh, Mary, would you want to? <laughs> the functionality of this machine, like I said, is to tell whether or not to put it on the inmate that's having a problem, whether or not send them to the hospital or what you tell them to pay for it. One story. We have AEDs, and this is uh, to allow our medical staff to do several different things. It obtains 12 week EKGs, which can triage to help keep the cost down to send them inmates out to the hospital, plus a security issue. Um, also, with today's inmates that are coming in, we have several that are on a substance that is of unknown. So, also, we need the capability to determine if certain things going on with their heart, um, whether it be a rapid heart rate or a lethal arrhythmia. This machine allows the 
their medics and nurses on duty to override and use their knowledge like an AED is for someone that's not medically trained. This has the capability to print out control the EKGs kit. We can override the jewels that we shot somebody with if they're only an atrial fibrillation and you can convert them if they're having shortness of breath. Things of that nature until the ambulance does get there. Of course we call the ambulance first but it is a, it could be a liability issue for us not to have this equipment. I'm just surprised this didn't come up during budget cycle. Again, kind of the end of life um, scenario we had on the technology switches. These are the things that get us during the year. So I was surprised. Yes, we have, this. we have, I don't know, still working. We don't have to. We're going to let them still work. So there's oh, not really a big enough five. It's going to break. Oh, it, it broke. Yeah, it just broke. It's completely we purchased okay. it from what I understand okay. approximately eight years ago. Oh, and it was refurbished. I guess, I guess what you might be getting is the, the life cycle has a, a specific number of years when you procure it, whether it's a refurbished or brand new, and that's some type of life cycle. And, and where were we at the time? Well, something like this, you, it, the life cycle depends on how many times you use it. I mean, right? Well, I don't know. I don't think it's that. I think it's just, I mean, I mean if it just yeah, it's just old, but, but if it's still functioning, you know, we're, we're going to work, uh, we're going to try to use things to the <laughs> yeah, we we have um, exchange batteries. We have exchange leads. Um, we just a couple different things to avoid having to buy brand new. But I think in the best interest of the medical department at the jail is to buy brand new, buy state of the art, which will last last longer, and will it'll just help our department. Any yeah. research on the companies other than this? Um, the life pack is currently bought the AMS. Um, all over Amarillo, they carry in their trucks, um, and it's state of the art, and they use it with yours. Very comparable to what uh, the emergency department is using. Judge, is there ever any um, dialogue with? Um, I think of Northwest in particular. I know they're on our top ten taxpayer list, and uh, and that's where our inmates go. It would be interesting to know if there's ever a business relationship. So as they have. Um, uh, material or or items of this nature that they don't use, um, they have a, an attrition schedule. I used to work at Northwest, so there is an attrition schedule. It doesn't matter how many times you use it; it knows however many years, and it follows that life cycle. So that obviously, so their state of the art equipment always at the hospital. It'd be interesting to know if there's ever a business dialogue, kind of like how we got the uh, the desk. Right? We don't often think about medical equipment that way, but it's very costly. Uh, very to stay up to speed, so it would be interesting to know. That might ever be a conversation. The CEO has attended uh, two of our things at lunch. Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying you get, get their used equipment? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, yeah. their used equipment is, is you know, you really probably not that old compared to how we relate that's, things that's today. Not, that sounds like a conversation with a crew plan, a strategic plan initiative. It just might be about, I'm not saying that addresses yeah. this immediately. And, and I think but. the problem that we're having right now is a lot of our equipment is starting to go out of date. Our stretchers are continuing to break down, which we're going to put into the budget to obtain. This is the problem that we buy refurbished equipment, and I do believe it'd be a benefit just to buy new, have the warranty, and avoid you know yeah. this problem in a couple of years from now. Would be interested to know what your um, grocery list is, right? Of all the things that you, you think you need, at least introduce it to them. Yeah. Might be a dialogue, might be worth it. I move to uh, approve the purchase of life. Where's the money coming from? It was actually on the budget. That was the transfer. Okay. Thank you, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I have a motion. Thank you, sir. I'll have a motion and a second on the paper. Seventeen, harmonize and consider national calling for the Rosebridge Personal Employment of Trey Brown and Summer Moore, effective June fourteenth, twenty seventeen. The resignation of Trey Brown. That's Troy. 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 I'm so sorry. Shannon. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I know. 
It's okay. I apologize. It's one of the Troy Brown Center more. I think it's the 14th the resignation of Troy Brown more. In fact, the 15th, he really did my job. Uh, an appointment at Dexter Beach as maintenance tank is requested for Mark Schumer, the Baker G. T. and the resignation of Pedro Arizona is signed for the Let's make a motion to do those first. Gentlemen, we approve the uh, employment items for the road bridge. Second. The motion is second on Pedro is again about zero. So this maintenance is the appointment of Pedro Arredondo as assistant groundkeeper as requested for Nick Weathers, effective July 1st. The appointment of James William Haskins as maintenance take one is requested for Jason Marlin, effective July 1st, 2017. Second. Motion and second on paper. The report today is 521 male, 79 of those are female, 9 of them are children, 81% are felons, 9% are misdemeanors. Do we have any county insurance items? Yes, we have one from the health manager. Thank you. Which one was that? Where was that? Uh, Sharon's office. Okay, regular session, we don't have one. Agenda items. Do we see the agenda items for next time? Um, the only question, Terry, I had a mental note about, I know I'm not going to call it the right thing, but the unused capital credits. I just didn't yeah. know if we ever had a dollar amount. Heard back on okay. That. Okay, once they have a dollar amount, it feels so good time to think about it. But yeah, that is that. Thank you. Is there anything else? Yeah, I'd like to, just for information purposes, many of you received uh, emails in regards to uh, issue on the Willow Creek Road, you know, speeding from the gentleman. And I'd like to just uh, inform the court and anyone else who received this so what, what really is, is going on. Um, we started hearing from this gentleman probably in the fall. He's a recent discharge from the military, moved here from uh, in the Fort Hood area. And um, he has, uh, I guess the only thing he has to do is sit out and watch traffic go by. But uh, this is, uh, the sheriff has addressed this issue. They've gone out to the home, spoke with the gentleman. They've set up uh, not only uh, speed trailers at this location, they've set and watched traffic for a full 24 hour period. Um, they've done everything that financially possible to do. If we did this for every citizen that had a complaint about speeding in the, in the county, we, could, we couldn't do anything with our sheriff's department. Um, I have been in communication with this gentleman over the, those months. Um, the last communication I had with him was probably two weeks or so before this email that came out uh, happened. Some of the things he said are untrue. Um, and so before, well, let me say that the ne only negative things I've ever said to this gentleman was number one, I didn't believe that we should ever put a, a speed bump on the main arterial road like Willow Creek. And that wasn't the answer he wanted. And so he got kind of snarky and, and I told him, well, I really will not respond to you again because uh, I think you ought to spend your time on something more positive. But those were the only, uh, only negative things that were ever, ever said to the gentleman. Um, so, he has also uh, followed our deputies to, uh, to their eating places, complained that there's two of them together. Well, in this day and age, I think that's a, a wise decision to keep two of them together. They're out of their squad cars. Um, so, I, I think before we start sending things around, we need to check what the truth is, and, and, uh, and really check with uh, 
who's been involved. Um, I just wanted to clear that up because uh, I think there's some misinformation. So. Sheriff, did he talk to me about this also? Did that speed thing that put, they put up out there for the picture, uh, how fast you were going was the average speed was like 47. So this guy is, is saying that they're always going 75 to 80. So it's just not true. And there, there, probably, there may have been something go through there, you know, that fast or whatever, but, you know, obviously, if we're not sitting there at the time that they're doing that, and we, we can't sit there 24 20, 7. So obviously, if we're not there, we can't. Uh, we've even had to where he's given description of the vehicle and we went and found the vehicle where it you know goes back to and and in fact uh lieutenant Moore just did this i think it was last week uh went up knocked on the door and the vehicle belonged to uh older gentleman and he said that his grandson was driving the vehicle and he assured that uh, his grandson was not being driving you know fast again but again like i said there you know there probably is you know some you know traffic bumps in there fast but you can't sit there that much just like on the i-40 you know you have more motorcycle officers out there traffic slows down when the motorcycle is there they speed up when they're not there so you know. i think another important thing is i have attended several of the homeowner association meetings not once has anyone else ever said anything about the issue so it's a personal thing. We've had people within the county, we've had to block their emails because they're harassing. And I think um, this is a bit of harassment. Commissioner, um, and I, I may have been the one that accidentally caused the heartburn. This is what I typically do, so I would be interested to know what we should be doing. Um, anytime I receive a complaint of any kind, I, I forward it to the appropriate department. I, by default, always include Scott and our judge. Um, so I think in that scenario, I did get an email and I sent it to the sheriff and judge, because I know that it's probably already been vetted. Um, that's just typically what I do. So if I did something incorrectly, I want to publicly apologize for that, if that was the case. Um, but I don't know if there's anything different we should be doing as protocol, because you know we often do get complaints. That's uh, very rare that we get a call that says good job, right? We get the complaints. Um, so if there's something anybody else says different, but if, if I caused any heartburn, um, I want to publicly apologize for that. Yeah, I think he was like the last week he has PTSD and has some issues. He's gone overboard, obviously. He just, he's got some problems. I believe that's what I do. Kept talking about it, he can go to the Citizens Academy and, uh, you know, see what all the sheriff's office does and all that. And, you know, wanted to go and then this last deal, he said, I'm not going. <laughs> Take notes okay. on this. Is there anything else? Nothing else? We are done. Thank you very much.